Hello, child of God. I'm about to tell you a story that I recently made up to illustrate and simplify hundreds of difficult Bible passages and prophecies. Please allow me the liberty to summarizing and condensing many fulfilled Bible prophecies and thousands of years of historical truth. A fairy tale usually begins with once upon a time, but this is an angel tale. So it begins with once in eternity, which is, of course, outside of time. This is an angel tale that does not really begin with an angel at all, but begins with a cherub. And cherubim are different created beings than angels. Cherubim have either two, four, or six wings. And usually they can be found as close to the throne of Almighty God as possible. And if I begin to sound a lot like Walt Disney telling a fairy tale, please just be patient with me. Very soon I'll get to the fulfillment of Bible prophecy, which is not a fairy tale. The angel tale begins with, Once in eternity, the anointed cherub Lucifer fluttered with all of his wings up to the throne of Almighty God. When Almighty God first created Lucifer, he was perfect, and no other cherub was more beautiful or more intelligent than he, but he knew it. Lucifer was an exceedingly beautiful, powerful, and wise cherub. He had been privileged to look into the red hot stones of fire in the holy altar of Almighty God in heaven. And hovering there before the throne of Almighty God, Lucifer began arrogantly fluttering his beautiful wings like a peacock. Cherubim are usually very humble before the throne of Almighty God. They use two wings to hide their beautiful faces, two wings to hide their feet, and of course they use two wings to fly. Lucifer was continuing to admire himself and was trying to show off before all the other angels. The music he played with his wings was no longer a sweet praise to Almighty God, but obnoxious praise to himself. He played a new song before the throne of Almighty God. I will, I will rule you. I will, I will guard you. And as he was playing and singing his song, Almighty God spoke in his wee small voice. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. But Lucifer was just not listening to Almighty God's wee small voice as he sang louder and louder. I will, I will rule you. I will, I will guard you. Then Lucifer challenged Almighty God to a chess game to prove that Lucifer was smarter than God. And Almighty God reminded Lucifer that he could see the end from the beginning and the beginning to the end. That he could see Lucifer and all that followed him being punished in the lake of fire. But Lucifer was still singing and playing and not listening. But he did catch these three little words, lake of fire. What lake of fire? asked Lucifer. Almighty God then answered in his wee small voice, the lake of fire that I created as you played your new song. Lucifer looked out into eternity and he could see a vast, eternal lake of fire far away from heaven that was created for the purpose of punishing Lucifer and all that serve him. Still in his wee small voice, Almighty God said, Lucifer, I love you and I'm not your enemy, but you are your own worst enemy. Your behavior is self-destructive and if you would stop admiring yourself for a moment and focus your eyes on me, you could easily see that I've created many cherubim and millions of angels. It's absurd for you to think that the creation can defeat and rule over the Creator. And as Lucifer was still being defiant, proudly standing there humming along his new song, Almighty God called a scribe angel and said, write what I'm going to say in a book, and I will call that book the Book of Truth. Then Almighty God told the scribe angel everything that was going to happen, every move of the chess game, from that particular moment in heaven to Satan being cast into the eternal lake of fire. 
for punishment. Then he told the scribe to place that book on the book table in the library in heaven so that Lucifer and all the angels in heaven could read it and then they could decide with their own free will what they wanted to do and just who they wanted to serve. That's when Lucifer turned his back on the Almighty God and looked out from the throne to all the other angels and he fluttered his wings and sang through his wings in his pretend to be God voice. And Lucifer told many lies to the angels. He said, God is lying to you because he just wants to keep you to be his slaves. And with all of this work, Lucifer convinced one third of the holy angels in heaven to sing his new song. He will, he will rule you. He will, he will guide you. Their praises to Almighty God stopped, and they began to focus only on themselves and Lucifer, their new God. The defiant angels became so self-absorbed that they did not read the Book of Truth, and it was available to all the angels. Yes, child of God, the rebellious angels could have read the Book of Truth and could have refused to follow Lucifer into the total defeat of the lake of fire. No one knows why. Almighty God did not just vaporize all the rebels. His thoughts and his ways are higher than ours, even as the heavens are higher than the earth. Satan has been having his fun playing God for many years. But this time of playing God is rapidly coming to an end in these last days. Like I said earlier, this is an angel tale. So let's leave eternity and fast forward into time itself to around 700 years before the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Almighty God sent a message through the prophet Isaiah to the emperor Cyrus the Great. The message was sent roughly 165 years before Cyrus was even born. Now I have reduced two chapters of manifested Bible prophecy to a few seconds of audible tape. Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that saith of Cyrus, He is my shepherd, and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built, and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden, to subdue nations before him, and I will loose the loins of kings, to open before him the two leaved gates, and the gates shall not be shut. This is a good example of Almighty God planning his future chess moves, and then leaving a time capsule to be discovered at a future date. In this case, Cyrus was convinced to release the Israelites to turn to Jerusalem and also help rebuild the temple because he was called by name roughly 195 years earlier in the scripture. Lucifer could see Almighty God making a chess move 195 years ahead of time, but was unable to stop it from happening. Almighty God has chosen to openly show himself by predicting future events and ensuring that they are manifest. Again, fast forward to the time around the year 536 BCE to visit Daniel on the banks of the Tigris River near Babylon. This is the third year of the reign of Cyrus. He had already sent the Jews to Jerusalem in the first year of his reign. The Jews were now rebuilding the city of Jerusalem and the temple. Almighty God began making Cyrus's conquest easy as he marched his armies to build his empire. And Daniel was fasting and praying for 21 days concerning the future fate of the Jewish people. Almighty God is an intentionally invisible God. He often uses natural events to accomplish his will, but still remain invisible. This leaves unbelievers plenty of room to disbelieve God, and believers must exercise their faith in divine providence. Lucifer, now called Satan, is unable to see future events. And as history has shown us, Satan cannot understand the prophetic events until after it happened. One of the main reasons the entire world knows that Almighty God exists is by the manifestation of ancient prophecy. The eternal God explained this himself in Isaiah 44 and 45. But I think what I'm seeing is multiple purposes for the prophecies. Lucifer showed off his beauty and wisdom and razzle-dazzled a third of the heavenly angels with lies and exaggerations. Almighty God displays his own signature on his own work by exactly foretelling the future and making the book of truth available to all of the heavenly angels to see. 
It's as if Almighty God is reaching out and pulling the feathers out of Satan's wings, one at a time, until Satan is totally naked and humble before the entire angelic creation. Every manifested prophecy is a reminder to Satan that Almighty God can see him in the lake of fire, completely and totally defeated and suffering. And as I said before, Almighty God began making Cyrus's conquest easy, just as he promised, as Cyrus marched his armies to build his empire. During the third year of Cyrus's reign, Daniel was fasting and praying concerning the future fate of the Jewish people. A messenger angel came to Daniel, and during the visit, Daniel fainted twice, and the angel touched him twice and spoke to him twice, and it gave Daniel strength. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand, and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days, for yet the vision is for many days. Knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee? And now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grecia shall come. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things but Michael your prince. Our goal here is to understand angel speak, and also to ask why the angel is giving such details of the spiritual warfare and the future events to a roughly 84-year-old man. First, Almighty God sent an answer to Daniel's prayer concerning the future of Israeli people, and then the prince of Persia stopped him from reaching Daniel until Michael the archangel jumped into the battle to free up the messenger so he could go talk to Daniel. Michael the archangel is a chief prince, and he's also the prince of Israel. Third, the messenger angel has to leave and go into battle with the prince of Persia, and after he leaves to go into battle with the prince of Persia, the prince of Greece will come. The angel said that before he he leaves, he will tell Daniel what is written in the book of truth, and that the angel has come to explain to Daniel what will happen to Daniel's people in the future, for the vision concerns a time yet to come. The angel also said, Daniel, you are greatly beloved by God, but you're going to die before these things happen. Then the angel explained from the book of truth the exact future history of the Israeli people and the empires that rule them through the time that Michael the archangel rises up. Child of God, there are several Bible commentaries online that correlate the manifestations of that portion of the book of truth with the actual historical events. It's an exciting study, but let's us stay focused on the angel tale. Obviously, Almighty God wanted us to know a little something about angels and the delay in answer prayers. He also wanted us to know a little something about the book of truth, which appears to be a list of events and not the Bible itself, just as the book of life is not the Bible, but a list of the redeemed of the Lord. And some of the names that are written in the book of life are also in the Bible. And some of the events in the book of truth are scattered into the Bible. But these books are not the Bible. We can see by these events that the ruling prince angels are territorial and named by their territories, Greece, Persia, and so on. They fight each other to protect their territories, even when Almighty God sends messenger angels. This unnamed angel was sent as an answer to Daniel's prayer. And this unnamed angel also explained that the angel that he had helped a ruler by the name of Darius the Mede. The Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. The Apostle Paul was pointing out that we're not wrestling with the people around us that cause us so much trouble. We are wrestling with these powers of authority, these demonic powers and their presence in your hometown, in every area of government, in your home, in your neighbor's home, all around you. The messenger angel that was speaking to Daniel mentioned the coming event of Michael the archangel, that he would stand up. This event happened after the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ and is plainly explained in Revelation chapter 12.
And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God, and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation, and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Well, child of God, you might think it's unfair that Satan and all of his demons were thrown down to the earth to trouble us. But keep in mind that the Holy Spirit has also come down to help us to overcome all of the powers of darkness. The Holy Spirit is more powerful than all the powers of darkness put together. The Holy Spirit is our teacher, and we do not need another messenger angel to visit us and read to us from the Book of Truth. Almighty God can see Satan totally defeated and being punished in the lake of fire. The Lord Jesus Christ defeated Satan on the cross, and now we must each defeat Satan with the blood of the Lamb, the words of our testimony, and die in the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is, to love the Lord Jesus Christ more than we love our own life. The Lord Jesus Christ spoke to each of us concerning these end-time events in the New Testament book of Luke. Heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting, and drunkenness, and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. The instructions the Lord Jesus Christ gave us is that we should pray that we are able to stand before the Son of Man. My friend, no one is able to stand before the Son of Man unless he is washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are none righteous, no, not one. We have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Let us pray now together and ask Almighty God to forgive our sin and wash us in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just follow after me in prayer, but pray with your own faith and your own sincerity. Father God, that's right, just pray in faith after me. Father God, I ask you now to forgive all of my sin and wash me in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and make me holy unto you. Baptize me now in the Holy Spirit and give me more power to resist temptations. I acknowledge that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for my sin and is soon to return. I forgive all of those people that I have resented or hated and I receive from you the free gift of salvation. I dedicate my life and commit my spirit to you I ask you now to keep me strong in the time of testing and help me to stand before the Son of Man. I receive that as done. Amen. Thank you for praying with me, child of God. If you'd like to see more videos on the baptism of the Holy Spirit or on end-time prophecy, please click the links at the end of the arrows. May God bless you. Peace be unto your house.